What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at graded regions. Ooh, what are those? Well, it, it basically tells us what has changed between an existing and a new topography in Revit. Cool stuff. Uh, it's probably good to kind of track this from the beginning. It's good to kind of know how your site's going to be affected throughout the project. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, then please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. That's hopefully why you're here. Okay, so I have just an existing topography showing because we need to work with an existing topography. You can see here that if I look at the phase, it is created in existing. Very good. And so this is going to allow us to not only use this to make a new topography, but also change the topography in the new phase and then see how the difference is and track the differences uh, between cut and fill and then basically know how much dirt we're moving around. This isn't like the end of the world to know, but depending on you know how much dirt you have to move to move your building down or up or whatever, might greatly, you know, probably will greatly impact the cost of the project. So it's just something to be aware of as you begin design, as you begin to document, because it's good to know. So I'm going to click on graded region. And again, this is going to be, we're going to want to start with an existing topography. So it says, yeah, the existing topography service is demolished. It, it will be. Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, we're, we know that. Um, but basically, we're asked, do we want to create a new topo surface exactly like the existing one? You know, basically keep everything as it is. Or do we want to create a new topo surface based on the perimeter points only? Well, I want to start with exactly like the existing one because I want to st literally start where I am and then just change a few things here and there. Okay, great. So let's do that. So I'm going to start with that. And then I need to select my <laughs> actual topography. And then here we go. I will finish that. And then boom. So here we go. We have our new construction topography. And the way you know you're working with a graded region is if I come over here into the properties and I see under other, I have a net cut and fill, a fill, and a cut parameter with these grayed out values. Grayed out meaning that I can't affect them. It's just reporting data. And then in this case, because I have not affected the topography itself, None of this data has changed. And so before we get into any of that, I want to actually make a schedule that will help us visu you know, further visualize this. So let's go ahead and make a topography schedule. There's topography. I can call it topography schedule. That's fine. I want to make sure that I at least get the cut, like those three at least. So here's cut. And then there's net cut fill. And then there's fill. And so maybe you have a name for the department, maybe any of that. But and so with that made, I can see all my information right here. So, you know, do I want to keep this? I mean, this isn't completely helpful, but this will actually track multiple topographies if I have done the same thing. Now I haven't. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm going to keep this schedule here, which is, you know, it'll be something that we can continue to monitor and look at as this video goes along. Of course, remember with schedules now, I can hold control and scroll in and we can see that this changes, which is wonderful. And so I'm just going to keep this way up here and we can keep monitoring that. And these values will change as we change the topography. So I'm going to edit the surface. And so we're not going to, we will not see any of this change until ultimately I actually accept this. So um, let's come over here and I want to just, let's just raise all this by five feet. You know, we can see up here that it's, it varies, but boom, I raise it by five. And look, the second I change it, I can see the total here changing. And so what happens here is that because I've raised this, I basically have added earth. I've, I'm adding earth. So this is straight up fill. So fill is in like coming off site and filling onto my site. And we can see the net cut and fill there is the exact same number because I've only added dirt. Now I'm going to do this something similar over here. And obviously we are just completely ruining the site, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So if I bring this down five feet, obviously I won't quite get to where I need to, but I can see that, all right, I'm cutting that amount of cubic feet, you know, 52,000 cubic feet, whatever. And so we have a constant cut and then fill. And then over here we have our net, which is great. So maybe you're, you're looking to balance this out a bit more. And so obviously there's a million ways we can balance this out. Um, I can obviously bring this down to the point and I can see even as I come down to where I'm cutting out more, I can get a negative number. So clearly I'm cutting out a lot more. So I'm not necessarily trying to get down to zero. Um, but you can see as I get closer to have this being the same amount, I get closer to zero. Basically, the closer you are to zero, the closer you are to 
keeping the dirt that is on the site, the exact amount that is on the site. That's generally what you'd like to do. I guess in a perfect world, you can use all the dirt on the site, but like in a different way. Usually that's not the case. Either you're bringing some in or you're taking some out, whatever. It usually isn't that bad. But the point is we can use this tool to help maximize slash minimize everything that we're trying to do for the design and then have that work out with the net cut and fill. Okay, great. So that's cool. We've done that. Now, the next thing I want to explore is if you've watched a previous video of mine, we looked at building pads. And how those work is you make a building pad. And I will make it right here for us in masking and sight, building pads. And I'm going to make, obviously, the most ridiculous looking thing ever so we can, you know, enjoy how stupid it looks. So there we go. This is a building pad. And I'm going to hit accept. And as soon as I hit accept, this building pad is going to basically cut all of the earth, cut or fill all the earth under this sketch to level one. And so that is going to drastically impact the net cut and fill like immediately. So as soon as I do that, you can see like, well, okay, wow. Uh, not only do I have this drastic amount of numbers and all these things changing, but <laughs> I have a second topography. Now the thing to be aware of is that if I click on this topography, I basically see everything. Now the thing that we're not seeing is our second topography, and that is technically created by the, the building pad right here. And we can see there's another topography. So in this case, I might want to call this pad topo. I don't know. That's fine. And then we can call this one just topo. Now obviously I need to bring this into my schedule. So let's come over here, fields, and then come to name over here. And I want this to be at the top. So there we go. I'll expand this so we can see everything again. So there's my topo. If I select this, I get like my topo and then my pad, which is, you know, basically everything affected by the pad. So clearly this is probably a poor choice on <laughs> where the elevation of the pad should be. So maybe we should put this, you know, five feet. We can start to see the difference. And again, maybe we're not trying to get for exactly zero, but we want to like kind of net this out to be close, you know? Obviously, we're not going to here. We, we basically just have to decide how this is going to work. But you can start to get an idea of the impact you're going to have on your site when it comes to all of this dirt. There's just so much that goes into this, and clearly you can see the amount of cubic feet is just absurd. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, something I'd like to do is, I mean, you could set up lots of conditions here. Um, I, I do like conditional formatting. So formats and then conditional format, and basically I can make this this turn red or, you know, I can make any of this turn red based on a certain value. Um, anything like that. If it's not, it's above this, below that, whatever. Um, basically, if I, if I want to track being over 10,000 cubic feet off, you know, above zero or below zero, um, then the thing turns red. And so I can just kind of track it and work with my model to get it close enough. Now, obviously we can see this visually and it, it works all the same. But it is nice to be able to see that conditional format in the works. But, I mean, really, you know, we can see this is useful information. And I will say this is not something I've utilized nearly enough. And it, unfortunately, really, is something you have to remember to do. Because, I mean, the fact that I, what I end up doing most of the time is using my existing topography. And then I'll make a new one. And I'll call that new. And then I'll basically cut one to the other and whatever, morph it together. Um, so that I have kind of the edge of my new topography working against the existing edge of beyond topography. The result with that is I don't end up getting any of this data, <laughs> which is unfortunate. And that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, I have to use the graded region and basically make the new topography based on the existing. So if you can remember to do that in the beginning, you'll be better off because you'll have access to all this data. So I'd highly recommend that you remember that and hopefully this video will allow you to remember to do that and hopefully me as well because I <laughs> I don't remember to do that enough either um, this works with multiple building pads it works with multiple topographies obviously we can schedule all of that at once and see all of it working together which is really good information because it it, it does impact a lot and so you know it's nice that we can see all this information updating in real time because you can track it so that's going to do it for graded region because there's actually nothing more to the graded region itself other than it does report this data and how we set it up based on the existing topography which we've done so you can choose to do however you want from there but 
I would use a graded region if you can because you want access to these parameters. So that will do it for this video. If you happen to learn something about graded regions, uh, please demolish that like button. Tell me that you might have. And if you have any more specific comments on graded regions, please let me know those below. Again, that will do it for this video. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.